The year is 1939. Hitler and Stalin divide the continent into their spheres of influence, crushing the old order of Europe into dust. They conclude a pact that makes Poland, the Baltic States, Finland and Romania their prey. The Germans and Soviets raise armies to crush their opponents with greater numbers of modern equipment. In both armies, armored units become the main strike force. But it is the massive and unprecedented air power that opens the way for the German Blitzkrieg and the Soviet march westwards. On the 1st of September, the Second World War breaks out. The Germans launch an invasion of Poland. The Luftwaffe deploys almost 2,000 aircraft of various types. The Polish army opposes these forces with less than 500. The enemy's advantage is 5 to 1. While the Polish Air Force inflicts proportionally greater losses on the Germans, it stands no chance of winning. By the end of 1939, almost all Polish aviation personnel make their way to France. Polish pilots bring the most valuable skill of a pilot, combat experience. Of the two combat squadrons, only the first Warsaw Fighter Squadron takes part in combat. After the surrender of France in June of 1940, most of the Polish pilots evacuate to Great Britain and initially continue fighting as part of the Royal Air Force. In the UK, the Polish government in exile works with the British to organize an air force once again. The squadrons are formed. The 302 Poznan Squadron, which is the first to enter service, and the most famous Warsaw Fighter Squadron, the 303, which achieves great success in the Battle of Britain. Polish pilots serve not only there, they fly in a dozen or so squadrons of the Polish Air Force in the West. Bombing squadrons 300 and 301, logistic squadrons and special purpose squadrons. Regardless of their unit and function, they risk their lives, often remaining out of the spotlight. Aviators. Page Halifax, Mark II, our little winged home. Over 5,000 parts and systems, 17 tons empty weight, a crew of seven, top speed of 282 miles per hour. However, without the ATA's help, any aircraft is just scrap. We are the ones who escort damaged planes to repair bases, risking our own lives. We recover planes shot up in combat so that they can continue to serve, including in flights to Poland. All available pilots are already on duty in fighter and bomber squadrons, on missions, training and patrols. And that is the only reason we women are finally allowed to get in the cockpit. Command had no choice. Someone has to risk their lives and transport these shredded coffins to repair bases. And every plane, no matter how shot up, is priceless. So we fly in Barracudas, Hurricanes, Mustangs, Oxfords, Spitfires, anything with wings, or at least remnants of wings. And there are gentlemen flying in the back seat, mostly reporters. But the price of feeling like a star for a moment is fear and nerves pushed to the limit as we fly these clattering wrecks to the next repair base. Fortunately, I'm not alone. Anna Leska, oh, <laughs> that is Lieutenant Leska, can fly anything from a bomber to a balloon. Today, the takeoff went smoothly, but then it all started without even a warning. All right, time to check the instruments. They'll be the only eyes our boys have up there. They need to be in top working order. Yes, Lieutenant, I'm leaving my station. Please, we can drop the ranks. We've been through too much together.
The HQ probably uses the black 155 megahertz frequency. This is Lieutenant Pilzutska reporting on the Red Blue Channel. Over. Well, Lieutenant, we are in a bit of a pickle. But not to worry. Get the checklist, map, destination coordinates and navigator's tools from my desk. Get the Halifax and my Spitfire ready for flight. After all, at war we have to manage under any circumstances. As always, I'm counting on you, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Leska, please report for tactical briefing. Transmission ends. You mean I'm the one in a pickle, Commander? All right, let's see. Engine check, calibrate instruments, fueling, the usual. Projector. <laughs> it's been so long since I've been to the cinema. The President of the Republic decorates the two officers who were responsible for this fine record. A 28-year-old pilot officer and Polish athlete claimed his victim in combat 23,000 feet over France. On the same day, the record was broken when another pilot of the same squadron notched up the 501st. To both men, President Reykjavits awards the Republic's highest decoration, the Virtuti Militari, the Polish VC. All squadrons are now competing for the second half thousand. The Polish Air Force commemorates its 500th victory. The President of the Republic decorates the two officers who were responsible for this fine record. What was it that my father used to say? 
Oh, right. Stress, mess, depress. Up is filling the tanks, down is draining, middle, pump off. Easy peasy. I need to make sure I get this right. If I start pumping this the other way round, that's going to be a mess, all right. All I have to do is pump the fuel out of the tank that has the most of it, but only so much that the others can be equalised by pumping into the least filled tank.
Huh. Easy. All right, done. There's something wrong with the electrical system. Oh, something sparking. Oh, holy smokes. So many wires here. The starter should work now. Wheels look underinflated. I need to check the pressure and top up the air if necessary. my map. This is Lieutenant Pilzutska speaking. Lieutenant, I had a feeling you'd still be in the office. Did you find everything? Yes, I've got everything. Excellent. Please plot the flight plan at the navigator station. Ah, I almost forgot. There's no point in checking the proximity radar without activating the IFF system in my plane. So I have one more task for you, Lieutenant. Please turn on the friend or foe recognition system in my aircraft first, and then start Monica in the Halifax. And one more thing. Please... Refuel my plane as well. At your service, Lieutenant. See you at the training ground. Yes, sir. <sighs> I need to get more organized. I should probably just start with approaching the navigation desk. Here we go. This will be a simple task. Plotting a course means connecting the starting point, which is our airfield, with the destination, meaning the training ground. Beautiful! We can get navigating!
Hand crank start. Wonderful. But where's the crank? I can start the engine with this. As easy as I thought. Cranked up, fired up. Fuel supplied. Team German aircraft downed. <laughs> Not a bad score. System activated. With this wonderful thing, no one will mistake this plane for a Messerschmitt. Task accomplished. The aircraft ready for range tests. Monica is detecting Kachor. I've got confirmation that the friend or foe system is working. Now you can see all around you. No bandit can get close to surprise you. Excellent, Lieutenant. Well done. Great. The plane is ready. Thank you, Yaja. I'll just finish the formalities and we'll be good to go. Yatiga, wake up! Yatiga, what's wrong with you? Are you hit? Talk to me! Uh, I'm fine! Start shooting back then! Uh, I'm on it! anymore launch a flare that'll signal for help assuming anyone's around flare away call in the cavalry get to the wireless station and set the radio to the emergency frequency ah the radio's busted I'll, I'll try Morse code
best scent. The front vicars shoot like hell. My target. I claim this one. Down five o'clock. More guests coming for the party. Nice. Godspeed. Yannick, was that you? Hands off. Lost child, your hull's leaking bad. I think your main tank's done. Good thing it's not on fire. We're going to bring this plane back in one piece. Fuel levels dropping. We need to cut fuel to engine three. We have a fire on board. Cut fuel to number. Number three is off. I'll get on with fire now. Be quick about it. It's getting thick with smoke here. I hope this is enough. All right, we can make it. Oh, the fire is out. No damage. I thought we were going to lose the plane. We need to land. We're running out of fuel. Ladies, it's thick with crowds over and over. Time to go. Thank you very much for looking after us. Damn, the gear's not extending. The rear strut must be gone. The control light is off. Yaja, we need your help, or we'll be landing on our tail. God, it's... did it! We've got the rear wheel! Not a moment too soon, we're about to land. And they said flying for the AT was boring like driving a taxi. So, coffee, tea, how about some Porto wine, Lieutenant? A large glass of Porto wine! Whew. Another plane saved! Maybe for the guys flying back home, but I've had enough of the Halifaxes for now. Tell me about it. Aircraft salvaged by the ATA are returning to Royal Air Force service. They are used for bombing throughout German-occupied Europe. They also fly to occupied Poland, carrying the silent unseen, couriers and weapons needed by the home army. But not even their passengers or pilots know how much these planes will soon be needed. This country has ceased to exist. Poland is no more. The Germans have created a general government out of part of the occupied lands and incorporated the rest into the Reich. Terror reigns everywhere. The Germans persecute the Jews, forcing them to resettle in ghettos and then send transports to extermination camps. From the very first days of the war, Poles are arrested and shot. On the 27th of September, 1939, while the Polish army is still fighting, an underground military organization is established. The service for Poland's victory, which is transformed into the Union of Armed Struggle and the Home Army, the largest underground army in occupied Europe. In order to fight on, they need to be in contact with the Polish government in London. To this end, the 1,586th Special Purpose Squadron is created in 1943 carrying couriers and essential supplies. It's an express line to hell. 
as the planes make their way over German-occupied Europe, flying at the limits of their capabilities, running on fumes. 1943 becomes a watershed year. The Allies land in Italy. On the Eastern Front, the Germans suffer defeat at Kursk. A year later, the Allies land in Normandy. The days of the Third Reich seem numbered. Meanwhile, another threat arrives from the East, Hitler's recent ally, Soviet Russia. Its armies defeat the Third Reich and advance, occupying Polish lands. They establish political control over them and usher in a new terror. In response, the leaders of the Polish state introduce Plan Tempest, a demonstration of Polish presence in the liberated areas. Home army units are to reveal themselves and cooperate with the Soviets. Stalin, however, does not intend to share his power. Operation Tempest does not include big cities. At the last moment, Warsaw is included, where an uprising is being prepared. The Germans can thwart these plans with a single decree, forcing the Varsovians to build fortifications. It is clear to the Home Army that this will decimate the Polish forces in Warsaw. It's necessary to act. It's now or never. The dramatic decision is made on the 1st of August. The uprising in Warsaw breaks out. The insurgents manage to capture the city center, the main post office, the postal station, the power station, the arsenal. However, the Germans defend themselves fanatically. They send new troops to Warsaw. The insurgents keep on fighting. They look to the sky, but the only planes over their heads are Stukas carrying death. Meanwhile, Polish pilots stationed in Italy learn from the radio about the outbreak of the uprising. Their commander has only eight operational airplanes. It's not until the 4th of August that the pilots receive permission to airdrop aid for the home army, but in completely different parts of Poland. The pilots decide to break through to Warsaw on their own. Will they make it in time before the SS troops, which are ready to crush the uprising? On the 15th of August, our crew is ready. The objective? Warsaw in the Campinos Forest. The route and takeoff time are decided for us. We have to be over the target between midnight and 2 a.m. to avoid interception by German fighters over Hungary. The sun rises at 4.20 a.m. May we live to see that sunrise. Anti-aircraft defense, they've got us. Attention, objects on the shore. That's artillery. Anti-aircraft guns on the right. Target their searchlights. Attention, they see us. anyone anymore. It's done. We're going down to the Fistula River. It can be hot.
Team. Recognize it must be ours. It's the elusive. Elusive or not, now it's the enemy. Fire at it. bought ourselves a bit of peace. The bridge ahead, Vlodek! Look, I'll be damned. Something is flying on those tracks. Vlodek, you've got a chance. A train. Just don't waste the ammunition. Easy. I won't waste it. Is that a glow up ahead? Is that uh, Warsaw? The capital is on fire. The damn Germans set it ablaze. God, our people are there. In that hell for the second week now. Maybe those kraut cockroaches all go to hell. I'll make a turn to assess the situation. Vlodek, keep an eye on the situation. A column of vehicles down there, headed for the drop zone. Heads up, it's the Prudential. Don't worry, I'll go around it. This is our drop zone. Clear for now. Vlodek, take the lower machine gun. Don't let them reach the square. Our struggle will be in vain. One hit. Good job. Confirmed. Destroyed. Got it. Good job, Vlodek. I can't reach them from behind. I'll make another turn.
can't hang around here any longer, now or never. But aim accurately at them, because these anti-aircraft guns will blow us out of the sky. Targets destroyed. I confirm, all targets destroyed. Good job. We're flying over the drop zone. We're starting the drop. Blodek, are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. The package is on target. Hit. Right, on target. Congratulations. We're getting out of this hell. Attention, aircraft silhouette at six o'clock. Tight? I don't see it, it's too dark. I see them. They're junkers. Damn it, they're coming for us. It's coming from the right. Look out, from the right. Did you hit him? Hit, I repeat, he's hit. It's coming from the right. Look out, from the right. Circling above us. as well. I mean, the co-pilot reporting... Rear gunner reporting readiness. Mechanic reporting in. Second Lieutenant Bernard reporting I'm all right. More or less. Well, boy, you're all real sharpshooters. Now let's head back to the base. Bravo! <laughs> <laughs> We're returning to cruising altitude. What did they hit? The engine! Damn it! Gentlemen, the raid is over. I can't hold us anymore. Bailing out. Jump, Lodek! Quickly! I'm right behind you. Here goes nothing. In our line of work, one often becomes a national hero. Unfortunately, posthumously. After years of fighting in the West, we all dream of returning home. But hell, not like this. I didn't fight my way to France in September to spend the rest of the war in an off-lag. I knew only one thing. I would not be taken alive.
I'm alive. Broken, scratched. I'm back. I need to contact the Ohm Army. Don't even know where I am. And most importantly, I need to destroy the radar. It can't fall into the hands of the Germans. No use. This stuff won't work anymore. All I can do is blow it all up. Explosive charges are usually placed in marked wooden transport crates. That should be enough. Run for the hills! Now I need to find the radio, just to make sure an entire German battalion doesn't come running. There has to be a transmitter somewhere! Well, it won't be easy. I can try to proceed, but the chances are slim, or I'll use the minefield map. Now I need to... ...to find the radio, just to make sure... Well, it won't be easy. I can try to proceed, but the chances are slim. I'll use the minefield map. Now, well, it won't be easy. I can try to proceed, but the chances are slim, or I'll use the minefield map. Wer da?
Here goes nothing. Easy now. No sudden movements. I might be able to sneak through. Patience. I have to wait for the right moment. Look at them. So close together a mouse couldn't slip through. I have to find another way. Achtung, Achtung, ich widerrufe den Alarm. Alle Besatzungen an ihre Positionen. Bedienungen der 88er Geschütze, ihr habt zwei Minuten zur Rückkehr. Alright, they're gone. I just need another minute. I think I've got something. Hello? This is Hornbeam 1. Three poles on the road. They're spilling the beans like crazy. I can't get through. I have to rearrange them somehow. Grab one. You don't have the equipment for that. I've got no choice. If... Fuses of the projectiles. It's the only way in this situation. Damage the fuses. Copy. I mean, it's a piece of cake. Where's our meeting spot? Three kilometers from here. A lone barn. When you're ready, signal SOS with lights. That's how we'll recognize you. Hornbeam 1. Copy. Over and out. Searchlights again? Bloody hell! There's a fuse box. Now I have to dismantle and arm one of them. I have to screw the cover on now. Achtung, Achtung, ich widerrufe den Alarm. Alle Besatzungen an ihre Positionen. Quickly now. 
Next fuse. Second fuse. Let them choke. I hope it doesn't blow up in my hands. All right. One more pole left and the Krauts can go choke. Isn't that a bomb? Achtung, Achtung, ich widerrufe den Alarm. Alle Besatzungen an ihre Positionen. Bedienungen der 88er Geschütze, ihr habt zwei Minuten zur Rückkehr. It's like they set it up just for me. Let's go! Well, that gave my bloody nose. Should have been a commando, but no, I wanted to fly. Now I have to flash them a signal with my lights, or they'll think I'm a kraut. Good morning, gentlemen. Man, I envy you guys. Take care, for our work is far from over. As long as Warsaw is fighting. On the night of August 16th to 17th, 1944, the crew of the Halifax bomber JP-220C under the command of Leszek Ausiani delivered the supply pods for the Warsaw insurgents. The entire cargo landed successfully at Napoleon Square in Warsaw and was retrieved by the fighting Poles. During the overflight, the crew constantly exchanged fire with German anti-air guns deployed along the banks of the Vistula River and within Warsaw itself. On the way home, the bomber was engaged and damaged by a German Junkers Ju-88 fighter plane. All the crew members, except Lezek Ulsiani and Jan Luke, managed to bail out. The Halifax crashed into a barn in the village of Dembina, near Bochnia, in the Lesser Poland region. Miraculously, all but one crew member survived the crash. Wojmierz Bernhardt sustained only minor injuries as he landed on a tree, which softened his fall. After making contact with a member of the Home Army, he joined the unit of 2nd Lieutenant Zdzisław Meteor Strasinski. From August 1st to September 13th, the No. 1586 Special Duties Flight conducted 54 sorties, losing 11 crews. Throughout the Warsaw Uprising, 306 Allied planes dropped 159 tons of weapons, medicines and food. Although this was too little to change the course of the Uprising, it was enough to show that the city was not left to fight alone. During the years 1940 to 1947, more than 16,000 people served in the Polish Air Force in Great Britain, 